Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at Kamal Hooks. This is something we've been trying to learn on stream recently over at twitch.tv slash Dino. I'll have a link in the pinned comment if you care. Uh, but basically, we've been playing around with the idea of having a Rails app that deploys a uh, Minecraft server or deploys alongside a Minecraft server. So the current implementation is a Rails app right here in a server block in Kamal. And then we also have an accessory for our game, which is just our game server. So this is just a modded Minecraft server configured to use Forge. And then we put some mods in there. And then every time we either run a command here, we uh, can use like Archon to do this uh, right here. Like if we want to, I don't know, give me uh, 64 or diamond 64 or something, I have to reconnect. Okay, so we're over here. We can create this command. You can see that gives me diamonds in here. So we're running those commands on the server. Or we can come back here and we can deploy a mod pack. So if I come over to the root of the app, come over to mod list, I can deploy one of these, click deploy. The server will continue running until a minute ticks over. So once we get to 7.45 PM, the server will shut down because the uh, the server itself sees that Minecraft needs to be restarted. So it restarts it to update the mod list. So these mods get extracted into the server file. Everything runs like that. Now this is gonna be a deprecated implementation in like by the time this video is over almost. But I wanna take a look at how we set this uh, thing up that runs on the server using Kamal because that's kind of weird. Like, how do you get a service to run? There's no service block in here or anything, right? Well, that's where these pre-connect hooks came in, or I guess the hooks in general. So these just allow you to run any type of script, any arbitrary script. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm saying, all right, I need to put a script on the server. I need to put a Linux service and a timer to run that service every minute. And that service will then run the script. And I can basically have the script do whatever I want to. In this case, it just tells Docker, hey, restart your stuff. So you can see right here, the server just stopped and we're good to go. Uh, then I have to make it executable. So I SSH in instead of using SCP to do our secure copy, I'm then SSHing into the server. I'm changing the uh, permissions on the file. I'm then reloading the daemon, enabling the file checker and starting the file checker. And then we say, all right, pre-connect hook is finished. And then we put exit zero at the end to tell it this worked okay, which causes the deploy to continue. And now because this is a pre-connect hook, and this is important, it's a pre-connect hook without a extension. By default, they all have dot sample at the end. You need to get rid of that dot sample. Don't put dot sh. You're just relying on your shebang at the start to set up whatever you need to. Then that gives you like your syntax highlighting. So that's how we're doing this in the pre-connect hook. We use Kamal host because that gives us our IP from our deployer, et cetera, et cetera. Now, it really doesn't matter what we're running here for the service, right? Like all we really have is a scripts file and I'll open this up real quick. You, you're free to like, uh, you know, pause the video and just check what it's doing. Here's our service, right? This is the thing that runs a specific script. It only runs it once. We then have a timer, which runs that service every minute. I guess this is how you indicate it's every minute. And then we come over to here, which is just our actual thing that's checking uh, if the flag file exists. We do that using a volume that both the Minecraft server right here, the data volume and the Rails app have access to. So the Rails app puts the file into the data volume and then the Minecraft server uh, can then see it, or uh, sorry, the service can then see it. We can also unzip our mods because we're putting this into the data, data folder. We can unzip our mods into the Minecraft server's mods directory. So that when this gets restarted, everything just works. So that's kind of how this setup works right here. There's nothing really special. We just remove the flag file after we've restarted the Docker container and we're restarting it by using this container name, which is the name of our service block right here, services deployer. And then it's hyphen the name of the Kamal accessory, which is game. So it's deployer dash game is the name of our container. If I SSH in real quick, I can do a Docker container PS. We can see right here, deployer dash game is the name of our Minecraft server is how that works. Okay, anyways, this is fine, but let's let's actually do our own Kamal hook and just run something real quick. So I'm gonna minimize Minecraft. We're gonna come over to DigitalOcean. I'm gonna create a new server. We're gonna run this whole thing through scratch, from scratch real quick. I'll edit out all the boring bits so you don't have to see it. Okay, I have a $6 server here. I'm gonna call this Kamal-hooks-demo. I'm gonna go ahead and click Create Droplet. Well, while that's running, I'm gonna come out of here and I'm gonna create a uh, new app in YouTube slash Rails. We'll say rails new Kamal underscore hooks. We'll just go ahead and run that. I have to ch Ruby to 3.2.2 and now I can do the rails new hooks. Okay, so that's that's up and running. All I really need to do is I need to say the Kamal uh, IP here, whatever this is, I need this to uh, be the new server IP. And then, you know, from there, I can pretty much do whatever I want to. It really depends. Uh, 
here I'll CD into Kamal hooks. I'll do a code dot. And then I'll do a, uh, you know what? I'll just do this. I'll just say Kamal init. Once this is, once we see the files generated, we'll run this. This generates our config file, which is a deploy.yaml, our env file, and our sample hooks. So in our env file, we need to put in our master key. So we'll come into config and master key, copy the master key, come back to the env file and paste the master key in here, save this. Your registry password, in my case, that's gonna be security dot docker hub or whatever uh, hub dot docker dot com slash settings slash security i have my minecraft key and the link tree key i'm gonna create a new one i'm gonna call this kamal underscore hooks key right generate copy come in here paste this in there you go your env file is now set up let's come into the deploy.yaml now this one's kind of weird because there's a bunch of stuff in here don't really care though so what we're going to do instead is we're going to come over to the other file that we have here uh, and we're just going to copy this, but we're going to remove a lot of it. And then I'll just leave you with what needs to, to be in here. So we come in here, the accessories block, uh, we don't really need this. So we can just come over here. We can just get rid of this. Don't need any accessories. We have traffic. We have the volume. We're going to leave just the Rails volume here. We have just a 443 endpoint. We're grabbing our master key for our secret and our Kamal registry password. Now, all of this stuff is, um, this is all covered in a previous Docker or in a previous Kamal video. So I have a link to that in the video description if you want to go see that. I'm going to get rid of this private networks stuff here too. So what we need here is we need a service. In this case, we'll say this is the DNout service. It's going to go to an image of DNN slash hooks. It's going to be on the uh, Docker hub. Then we need to put in the IP. So let's come back over to DigitalOcean, copy our new IP, paste this in. And then we have a domain name here. Now I fortunately have a problem with buying too many domain names. So what I'm gonna do is come over to the Cloudflare dashboard, over to the one that's currently pointed to a Rails app, and I can just configure that one. This, it really doesn't matter because it's actually that easy to set this up. What do we have to do to make this point to the new uh, location? We copy this IP. We need to create an A record and a uh, C name. You can ignore this Minecraft one. This was just for some testing purposes. Uh, but we can come in here, we can edit this. We can change this IP to this new server. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. So you come in here, you change this. Then you have to come over to SSL. You have your overview. You want to make sure you're on full here for your encryption mode. Then you want to come over to the edge certificates, scroll down a bit, make sure always use HTTPS is turned on. And then you can also use your automatic HTTPS rewrites. And that's that's it. That's your Cloudflare setup. You now have SSL enabled with this setup for uh, your Kamal stuff. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to run a hook or something. So I figure a good way to do that is to just, let's just create a folder on the server and see what happens. I'm gonna come over to the DigitalOcean. I'm gonna copy this IP. I'm gonna SSH in as root at this IP. I'm gonna type yes blindly without even checking. I'm gonna CD to root or on an LL. And we can see in here, there is no test directory. So I'm gonna come into our pre-connect hook. It doesn't matter which one you do. It, it really just changes when this runs. I'm gonna say pre-connect. Now this one out of the box runs some Ruby stuff. That's great, but I really don't wanna use Ruby here. So I'm gonna come into a different one. I'm gonna copy this shebang that says use bin slash SH, just like that. I'm going to get rid of all this code. Instead, what I want to do is I want to SSH into this server. So I'm going to say SSH root at this IP, copy the IP. Or I can just say SSH in as dollar sign hosts. Uh, sorry, dollar sign Kamal hosts, like this. SSH in as this, and then I want to execute something. What do I want to execute? I'm just going to say make dir dash p slash test. Uh, and that's fine. Then I'm going to do one more SSH in again, just to show you that you can do this. And I'm going to put hello world into this test slash hello world. You'll see the syntax highlighting here is messed up. Unfortunately, a consequence of not giving this a file extension, but you need to not give it one if you want this to run. So we'll close out of here, open it up again. And now we have proper highlighting. So you can see the Kamal host is right here. Make dir dash P echo hello world. The only thing I don't know is what happens if you have multiple hosts, if this becomes an array and then you have to do like a zero here or how this works. So just be aware of that. In this case, I only have one host, so I should be fine. So we're going to see if this gets made right here, uh, and then we can look at it. So how do we actually test this now? Well, pretty simple stuff. I'm actually going to come down here and get rid of this, this private network as well. So we have pretty much the bare minimum here. And I'm going to come out, Control D, Kamal, uh, Setup. Run this. First thing it's going to do, it's going to check the server, and it's going to say, does the server have a Docker file on it? Or does the server have Docker on it? Which it doesn't. So that'll start running. We can then come in here, go to code YouTube Rails, Kamal hooks, right? 
And then we can just SSH into that server. I'm gonna SSH in real quick, CD to the root, run an LL. Oh, we already have a test directory. Let's CD into test. What's in here? We have a hello.txt. Well, I wonder what's gonna happen when I run cat hello.txt, hello world. So you can see here, again, we had a pre-connect, the pre-connect ran, and now this is up and running. Now I don't have Docker over here, like running right now in the background. Uh, so I would have to actually come over to my my uh, Windows side and say Docker, open up Docker desktop, make sure that's up and running so that we can actually do the Kamal deploy. I'm gonna do that just for the sake of having this be uh, complete. Uh, just, you know, leave an F in the comments for me because this is gonna take me like 15 minutes and we're just gonna edit this out and see that there's a basic Rails app up and running, but I wanna make sure that you see everything working so you can believe at least that this worked on my machine at some point. So I'm gonna run the Kamal setup again and then I'm gonna see you after this is done. Alrighty, now we can head over to the website, hopefully. As you can see, it's been it's been some time. Oh, we can see here that the Rails app is at least up and running. Now, of course, we don't have any pages generated, so that's why it says, you know, the page doesn't exist because there's no page to go to. But you, at least you can see the Rails app is up and running. And we have actually deployed that um, that test file because of the pre-connect hook to our server. So yeah, that's a basic overview of how you, you would use these. You just change where you run them, maybe change if you're running like a Ruby file or like just a regular bash script or whatever, whatever else you want to run. Uh, and that allows you to basically do whatever you need to on the server. So yeah, thank you for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. See you on stream over at twitch.tv slash Dino. And for now, thank you for watching.